Yeah, that's probably not good. All right, can I do this without bumping my head? Oh yeah. Howdy folks, welcome back. Today's project is a 2010 Ford F-250. It's here because it has a whining noise somewhere in the drivetrain. The whine is speed dependent, so it changes frequency as you drive faster. I tried to capture that sound on the camera and it just, it didn't work. It just sounds like normal, normal background noise. Anyway, pretty simple diagnosis. I pulled the check plug out of the rear axle. The magnet's covered with metal and the oil was real frothy and kind of brown and nasty looking. Anyway, I've gone ahead and pulled the cover off just so I could give this guy kind of a halfway estimate of what I think is wrong and what it's going to cost to fix it. I believe that the problem is the pinion bearings. Just quick glance, I think that the ring and pinion is going to be okay. We're going to check that a little bit closer, uh, but we probably can't make a real solid determination on that until we get the pinion bearings fixed. Anyway. Let's get to it. This is, I believe, a Ford slash Sterling 10.5 axle. Truck's got about 100, just over 100,000 miles, so not a lot of miles on it. This is a locking differential, I believe. Anyway, we're going to get it torn apart and see if we can figure out definitively what's wrong with it, what parts we can reuse, what parts we need to replace. Oh man, that sucks. That's an original Stanley CompoCast dead blow ball peen hammer. That's cracked there too. That's a bummer. These are really good hammers. I feel like we had a dead blow version of this break on a video a long time ago. We're going to pull this whole differential carrier assembly out, but before we do that, I want to check the backlash. The spec is eight to 12 thousandths, and it's showing about 10, so that's right in the middle. It's right where it should be. And there's an electrical connector up here for the diff lock. I hope it comes apart. Yes. There we go. <laughs> Thought they'd be tighter than that.
Yeah, that figures. Hey, there it is. Jeepers. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's pretty bad. Oh yeah, big old chunk out of the race. Cool. Yeah, she's in pretty bad shape, folks. Pretty bad shape. That's good though. Means we found we found the smoking gun. All right, folks, time for a survey of the damage. Spoiler alert, there's a lot of it. This is the glitter I wiped off the fill plug when I pulled it out. There was a lot of metal in the oil. A lot of metal. Well, starting with the pinion, the outer bearing is junk. You guys saw the outer race. It's got a big chunk out of it. The inner race and the rollers are no better. The inner bearing is, is in better condition, but it's still not great. It needs to be replaced as well. The actual pinion gear itself, in my opinion, looks fine. The shaft is fine. That part could be reused. On the differential carrier, the left side bearing, it's pretty rough. The surfaces are pitted. It doesn't sound great when you roll it. Not catastrophic, but definitely needs to be replaced. On the right side, the damage is significantly worse. So we've got some severe pitting here that bearing is, is badly damaged. The real problem though is on the outside of this bearing race. I don't know how well it's gonna show up on the camera, but you see that streaking? That means that the bearing's been spinning in the axle housing. So if we look at the bearing cap here, again, it probably won't show up very well on the camera, but there's a distinct you know, shiny part and then a dull part. That's where the, the bearing race is actually worn into the bearing cap. Uh, that, is, that is not good. There's no easy way to fix that. Now again, on the shim here, this is the shim that fits up against this race. You can see galling right here. That's where the, the outer race has been spinning against this shim and it's chewed it up pretty good. So, that is a problem, a major problem. As far as the gears go, 
Again, I think the, the ring gear is serviceable. The teeth look fine to me. The tooth wear pattern looks fine. I think we could reuse that. There is some damage to the spider gears though. I don't know if I can show it to you, but the spider gears are pitted. Their surface looks about like this bearing race surface. Again, I don't know if that would really hurt anything. I imagine we could reuse all the gears. Ideally, we would need to replace at least the spider gears though, in order to get this thing back to 100%. So just a quick demonstration of what I'm talking about. I've got the bearing caps reinstalled. They're torqued up. Let's see how I can move this race. So that's a little bit loose. That one's probably not, not too bad. Uh, where were we? I had two phone calls and a parts delivery. Place is a madhouse today. Uh, the left side bearing. She's pretty loose. So I can actually rotate it pretty easily. And it will actually slide right out. So I'm not an expert about rear axles by any means, but uh, I don't think that's, I don't think that's good. Now there's no preload on these bearings, so maybe it's not a fair test, but if you push this bearing all the way in up to the shoulder where the wear is, it tightens right up. So in my opinion, that's a problem. It's a pretty big problem couple of options. I guess we could take the cap off. We could get our little center punch in there. We could do our mill right routine and just, you know, put a bunch of little peen marks in the, in the bearing journals. See if we could tighten it up that way. We could spray it down with some bearing retainer, Loctite 608 or whatever, whatever we want to use there. Some differential carriers actually call for that as part of the the bearing installation procedure to use a bearing retainer. Now, if we really wanted to fix this right, and this was the last Ford 10.5 inch axle left on planet Earth, we could take the cap off, grind the bottom faces of the cap to move that cap forward, and then line bore this journal back to the correct diameter. That can be done. Let me know what you guys think. I don't know. Suppose I'll get people telling me, well, I always get people on both sides of the fence. You know, I'll get a guy that says, oh, I've rebuilt 7,000 rear axles and they're all like that. Put it back together. It'll be fine. Well, the right side wheel seal was leaking. You can see it inside the, inside the brake rotor. So I went ahead and pulled the hub off. The wheel bearings are okay, at least on the right side. So. Evidently, whatever metal was in the oil did not make it out to the, to the wheel bearings, to the hubs. So that's good news. So we'll need a wheel seal, at least for the right side, but the wheel bearings themselves are fine. All right, folks, here's how it's shaping up. To fix this axle, at a minimum, we need both pinion bearings, a pinion seal, and a pinion nut, a new crush sleeve, and the pinion bearing shim kit. We also need both differential carrier bearings, the carrier bearing shim kit, and I believe we need to replace both of these thick outer shims. Because with that galling, there's no way that that's an even surface. We'll also need at least one wheel seal, probably just go ahead and do both sides. Uh, that's about $700 worth of parts. If we want to replace the ring and pinion and the spider gears, you can basically just double that. That still leaves us with the issue of the bearing races being loose in the axle housing. We have to come up, with, come up with a plan to fix that. Like I said, there's a couple options, but none of them are really very good. Alternatively, for about $500, I can buy a complete used axle from a junkyard that's known to be good. Good. In my opinion, that's that's the only way to go. There's just, 
you know, these axles are not rare or expensive. Ford made tons of these trucks. They rusted out like crazy. So junkyards are full of pretty good drivetrain components for them. So I say we just drop that whole axle out of there and put a, put a used one in its place and forget about it. So we're gonna reuse all the brake parts. It's got basically brand new brakes on it, new rotors. This is a new caliper on this side. Come on. I don't know how it is where you guys live, but around here, junkyards are pretty reluctant to sell any kind of brake parts. I don't know if it's a liability thing or what the, what the deal is, but they don't like selling them. I had a guy with an old like an old grain truck of some kind. And he couldn't buy new brake drums for it. And the junkyard wouldn't sell them to him. So I ended up negotiating with them and they, they finally sold them to me, but they just marked it on the invoice as, as scrap metal, basically. They didn't want to put the word brake anywhere on it. Usually junkyards, you know, they could care less about liability. They got all kinds of warnings and waivers and stuff on all their paperwork. In the place I deal with the most, they'll even sell used batteries, used coolant. You name it, it's for sale. Well, this side's dry, so that's good. All right, we gotta get that parking brake shoes off, I think, in order to pull that hub because it's got a two-piece seal and it's, it's gonna be a pain to get that off. Yeah, of course. Why would that actually work? Got it. Now these Fords take a, a fancy socket and you gotta kinda push in to disengage the ratcheting part of the nut so you can actually loosen it. And the left hand side is left hand thread. I forgot about that part. Now be careful not to destroy your speed sensor, which is on the front side of the hub. There it is.
There we go. Wow. Actually got one out of four out without breaking it. Look at that. Buy a lottery ticket, people. That never happens. Yeah, I want to trim that back. So the old trick is that you try to tighten it first, and then the nut will hopefully move, but the ho or the the line will stay. Look at that. Well, we've got to buy a second lottery ticket. Of course, I'm probably blocking the entire shot. Cool. I wonder if that guy will come out of there. What size do we suppose that is? That'll work, whatever it is. Do I recall saying at some point that I thought the vent was plugged? The, uh, the vent is definitely plugged. She's plugged up rock solid. So that's probably why we have a leaking wheel seal over there. Well, pretty sure that's the end of that plastic drain pan. Second one this week. Now yeah, that stupid sway bar is gonna kill us.
I just hold that some way. see any problems with this diff. Backlash seems good. Preload's pretty light, but they are used bearings. That's to be expected. So I want to get the cover glued on yet tonight. Give the silicone a chance to set up. And then tomorrow we can hopefully wrap this up. Decided to go ahead and pull the hubs off of our donor axle. The studs are all beat up. And then the dust shields are rotted out, pretty well mangled. So we'll just reuse the ones we've got. They're in a lot better shape. They're less rusty. The tone ring is less rusty. And on the donor axle, the wheel studs are all beat up. I don't want to swap out. 16 wheel studs so we're just going to reuse these the bearings are fine it'll be fine so we'll drop in our inner bearing lube it up like so wipe that off because we don't want it to affect our seal sealing now we're going to put a little dab of grease Maybe, if there's any in here that doesn't have a bunch of trash in it. Now we have this oil slinger ring. Goes on top of the bearing. And then a new national wheel seal. It does come with a bead of silicone or something to seal it, but I still like to put a little bit of Loctite 515 on. The 515 is great because it'll set up as a sealant, but until it does, it kind of acts like a lube. Help this bearing slide in a little bit easier. Now these seals are a mother to get installed. 
So we've got a seal driver. It's going to rest right on this outer lip. I don't have the for real national installation tool. Should probably get one, I guess. Boy, these things are tight. They're a pain to get out too. Actually, I've found the best way to get them out is to knock this tone ring off and then you can come underneath that lip and drive them off with a scraper or screwdriver or something. If you try prying on them, all you do is destroy that oil slinger ring. Ask me how I know. Okay. Let's not get greedy. Now, gonna make sure that our slinger ring is still centered up, looks good. The seal will hold it in place while we go to install the hub. And then normally on these two-piece seals, you need to lubricate the inside so it'll slip over the, the spindle. So if you're not familiar, this is a two-piece seal. So that the inside is gonna fit snugly over the spindle and it's gonna stay stationary. And the outside gets driven into the hub, it stays stationary, and the seal rotates inside of itself. Anyway, the national seals come with the grease on the inside, so we don't have to worry about that. Obviously, I've already installed the parking brake shoes. Uh, in hindsight, we could have left the parking brake shoes on. At the time, I was thinking we were going to have to pull the cable off, but it didn't end up being necessary. I'm going to put a little bit of oil in the hub. And one of the questions I get with surprising frequency on these floating hubs, uh, there's a tab inside that nut needs to line up with the slot in the axle. Anyway, uh, I get a lot of questions about why we don't pack these bearings with grease. We're supposed to tighten this to, I think like 70 Newton meters or something like that while spinning the hub. This part's not super critical. We're just making sure everything gets seated. There we go. Now we're gonna back it off 90 degrees like so. And then the final step, we'll torque that bearing to 15 Newton meters. You do have to have a torque wrench that can go counterclockwise, which the split beam style wrenches that I usually or typically use cannot do. I mean, that's it. So the nut has a spring loaded ratchet inside that's supposed to keep it from ever coming loose. So it's basically self locking. And the, the manual just says the bearings are supposed to be set for zero lash. So that's the setup. Anyway, back to the oil, or the grease rather. So on these modern floating axles, the bearings are lubricated by the same oil as the gears in the center section. So when the axle's in motion, the oil's gonna travel, it's gonna get splashed up and it's gonna travel through this axle tube and it will fill up the hub and keep it constantly full of oil. Now on the old school stuff, like that military truck we worked on, different philosophy. They actually have a seal between the axle tube and the hub and the bearings are packed in grease. So I'm not sure why they did it that way. I believe the problem was back in the day they didn't have you know good quality EP additives for the gear oil like what we have today and in order to get the full capacity out of the wheel bearings they had to use grease instead of oil. Now I'm not really sure why because there's bearings inside the the differential and it runs in oil, but uh, that's my only theory. That or it was just something that was that was done so it was easier to field service the bearings. I don't know. Come on, little 
little buddy. There we go. So the axle shafts are two different lengths and this side, the left side should be the longer of the two. There's an O-ring on the inside here that seals the axle, which is kind of cool. It doesn't have a gasket at all. Install these bolts with some new Loctite. And we're missing one. All right, I'll have to find that bolt and then look up a torque spec for those. Book says 37 foot pounds. That does not seem very tight. In a crisscross pattern. Yeah, we got them tighter than that with the impact. Okay, break time. All right, folks, break time is over. Yeehaw. That's the worst plugged vent I've ever seen. I don't know which came first, the chicken or the egg here. Did the, the water get in the oil and then cause rust on the inside of the vent? Or did the vent get plugged and then blow the seal out and then allow water in? I have no idea. All right, I've got the brake lines installed. Just need this breather to hold everything together. We're just about done with this job. And I trimmed off the hose and the hose is clear. So that should be fine. All right, folks, I think we are finally done underneath this pig. I've got to do the final torque on the U-bolts with it down at ride height. They get torqued to 195 foot-pounds. And then I've got to bleed the brakes. I can probably also do that down at ride height. Enough double entendres. If you're done setting the county on fire, can you help me bleed the brakes? <laughs> I know. I accidentally started a forest fire. Well, it's more like a cornfield fire. Oh, well. All right. I don't know if I've shown this off in a I video look like, yet. I look like I started a forest fire. Have I shown this off? A kindly viewer sent this to me. Kind? Someone that's trying to steal my job. Well, it's the same as the homemade one I had, but this one's all fancy. And it's got a magnet on it. A magnet. So we're going to use it to bleed the brakes today. It takes three to bleed brakes, doesn't it, Pop? All right, give me a minute to get set up. All right, lady. Give her a couple pumps, please. A couple more. Where's all the air? One more. Okay, pump it again. Push down. Let up. That's weird. Should have got a lot more air than that. Push down. Let up. Okay, I guess we're done. Well, Max wanted to help me bleed brakes, but uh, he ended up falling out of the truck. So, good that thing happens. we weren't in the air. All right, thanks for your help. You're welcome. Well, this is how I was always taught to fill the hubs just to tip the axle a little bit. Doesn't take much. So now the fluid will run from the center out to the hub, fill it up. Probably if you lubricate the bearings pretty good before you put the hubs together, you'd be fine. As soon as you take it out on the road, it'll fill the hubs up.
That's it, let's go for a run. Oh yeah, it's already way better. Way better. Fantastic. This is a pretty nice setup, really. 113,000 miles. I think those 6.2 gas engines are pretty good. I haven't heard about a lot of problems with them. Four-wheel drive with a locking differential. Now, supposedly this truck came from Canada, but it's really not that rusty. Yeah, I like it. All right, folks. I tightened the U-bolts to the factory spec, 195 foot-pounds. I topped off the fluid. I don't see any leaks or anything weird. I think it's time to set this one free. Pretty straightforward nuts and bolts kind of job. It's a fair amount of work though to replace an entire axle. I couldn't find a book time, but I've probably got six plus hours into this. It would have been less, but when you're dealing with junkyard parts, you just never know what you're gonna get. If that axle had been a little bit less mangled and you know we could have reused the dust shields and not had to pull the hubs off, it would have saved me probably two, maybe three hours worth of work going through those hubs and replacing the wheel seals and all that stuff. But that's how the cookie crumbles. No big deal. Now he's got new wheel seals. Don't have to worry about that. We've checked the bearings. We know that they're good. Plus he gets to use his original hubs, which are in, in my opinion, in better condition. So yeah, all's well that ends well, I guess. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. This video should come out sometime after Thanksgiving. So I hope everybody had a good Thanksgiving holiday. Well, this job's pretty hard on tools. That's an original Stanley CompoCast dead blow ball peen hammer. It's probably older than me. Then we lost this guy. That's a gear wrench pinless swivel impact socket. She ain't gonna work like that. These things are junk. You drop one brake caliper on them and they're broken. Hello family. Hello. I was Hello. just gonna show the people some carnage. Check out this U-joint. Oh, that does not look good. Strap's not tight. She's got some problems, I'd say. What are we up to? Can you say hi? I just, oh, hi folks. Good talk. Hi folks. Thanks for watching everybody.